Um, the second talk uh, will be given by Professor Zhu Sheng Yan and Dr. Xin Guan from the University of Texas. Um, Professor Yan obtained his PhD from Purdue University in the USA. After that, he worked at the University of Texas in Austin as a postdoc. In 2012, Yan joined the University of Texas and the Anderson Cancer Center, and now he is an associate professor there. So his lab is interested in exploring and understanding the structure and the function of ion channel signaling complexes. So far, the research projects in Yen's lab are mostly about mechanisms of BK channel gating and the regulation of auxiliary subunit and the recent years mechanisms of NADP signaling. And Dr. Singguan obtained her PhD from East China Normal University in 2013, and the next year she joined Yan's lab as a postdoc. Currently, she is also a research investigator in the lab. Her research focuses on studying the function and the regulation of BK channels and the mechanisms of NADP evoked calcium signaling. So today, Yan and Guan and we'll give you a talk on LSM12 as an NADP receptor protein mediating calcium mobilization from acidic stores. I think you can, yeah, you can start. Just okay, thank talk. you for the introduction. Let me uh, present in test. Okay. Can everybody see? Perfect. Okay, yeah. good. Good, good. So next one should be, I should move up. Okay, this title page. Uh, we thank uh, Sandeep and the organizer for invitation and make this meeting happen. It's really exciting to see all the progress on this direction. So uh, we, uh, for this work, mostly done by Ji Yuan Zhang uh, and uh, Xin Guan. And we have a post our uh, manuscript on the preprint server in last May. So, uh, so when we started this project, and uh, so uh, we read the literature, we learned that there's something um, unresolved the problem in this field, and particularly the NDB binding protein. <clears throat> Everybody agree that the TBC cannot directly uh, regul uh, be regulated by ADP; requires something else. So we learned from uh, um, ion channel study by polemics of other ion channel. We tend to believe that uh, most ion channel exist on the signaling super complex and uh, it's uh, surrounded by many tension protein. So we also see the same thing as the NDP signaling complex. So within this complex, the um, NDP uh, receptor or binding protein should be also interacting with the TBC channel and uh, not only by the NDP. So we try to use both NDP and the TBC channel to put down this ND binding receptor. Uh, we use a, a quantitative uh, polyamic approach, use select, and uh, we use a flag antibody to put down the flag tag the TBC1 and the TBC2 in hex cell. And to screen out most contaminated protein, we uh, different, different the label the uh, control and the test sample, which is the um, select reagent is a heavy and a light form of arginine and lysine. We get a TBC1, TBC2 enhancing protein uh, group. And uh, we, in order to put down the NDP receptor and uh, we immobilize the NDP to the R group beads by cross-linking. And in this way, we can put down uh, the NDP binding protein and also the enhancing protein of the binding protein, you know, a lot of things. And the same thing, we screen out a contaminant protein by use the differential label by the SALAC method. So we compare all the uh, group of the protein we identified. And uh, one protein um, particularly stand up, stand out, sorry, is SM12. It's mutually identified all different group in the TPC1 put down, in the TPC2 put down, in the NDP put down. Uh, in the present TBC1 expression, in the NDP put down in the present TBC2 expression. And we confirmed by Western blood that the immobilized NDP can put down the, um, this SM12 in the present TBC1 expression and also in the present TBC2 expression. And uh, we also confirmed that TBC1 can put down this protein SM12 and the TBC2 can also put down this protein. So next, we want to determine how well the binding is uh, between the SM12 and NDP. 
So uh, we purify the protein. We uh, use a recombinant human SM12. We suppress and purify from E. coli. In this way, the protein is very pure. So this uh, eliminates the interference from the enticing protein, contaminant protein, uh, many other things. So we did a binding assay using immobilized NADP to put down the SM12, purified SM12. Then we added the NADP to compete and uh, compete off the binding between the immobilized NADP and SM12. In this way, we can do uh, titration. And we can say that uh, this SM12 has high affinity to the NADP and uh, the KD about 30 nanomer. And, uh, but NADP cannot compete almost at all. Previously, the most binary thing was done, which is the P32 labeled NDP. So we synthesized the P32 labeled NDP and did the binary assay. In this case, we used the immobilized SM12 uh, put into the nickel column, nickel resin actually, and then to put down the free P32 labeled NDP. And, uh, and then we use the label free NDP or NDP to compete. In this way, we also get a similar result, the KD about a 20 nanometer and NADP cannot uh, compete as well. We also did the uh, put down assay, um, uh, use the immobilized NADP to put down the endogenous SM12 in the HK to another cell. So it's the same protocol, and uh, we found a similar result that the NADP can also bind to the SM12 with high affinity, and the NADP uh, cannot compete well as the AADP. And, um, but the difference between this and the what we got with the purified protein that look like the AADP still can compete at a high concentration. Uh, this can be caused by a uh, different reason. And uh, for example, post transition modification or intention protein of SM12 change the property of SM12. Uh, another possibility could be that the there's just some intangible protein and uh, that can maybe not specifically can bind it to both ADP and AADP. In this case, you cannot differentiate between the SM12 and the intangible protein here and uh, which this method. Of course, the, uh, the method also different. In this case, uh, we need a, it's from hex cell, we need a uh, lysis cell and uh, not a pure protein here. But anyway, so all these results suggest that SM12 can bind to NDP with high affinity here. Yeah. And also um, it's a specific and the NADP cannot compete well, yeah. So previously it's, uh, uh, people consider the TBC channel is ND receptors because uh, NDP can bind to the immunoprecipitated uh, TBC channel and also can bind to the uh, TBC enriched uh, membrane so we believe this should be mediated by the SM12. So we generated a knockout cell of SM12 in the HK293 cell. And she will talk uh, later in detail about the knockout cell. And uh, we found that the immobilized NDP can uh, put down the uh, TBC1 and also TBC2 in the Y type cell. But with knockout cell, the immobilized NDP cannot put down the TBC1 and the TBC2 anymore. Uh, we also get a similar result with the membrane. So with the P32 labeled NDP to do the binding assay, we found that the P32 labeled NDP can bind well to the Y type membrane with the TBC2 uh, expression. But in knockout cell, the binding is uh, greatly reduced and uh, reduced to a level that is similar to uh, in the absence of TBC2 expression. So I think this north that's not a particular binding left. So it's clear that SM12 mediates the intention between the NDP and the TBC, and that there's no direct connection between NDP and the TBC. Just to confirm what the people already thought. Yeah. So next, I'm going to handle this uh, talk to Xin. Uh, Xin going, she's going to talk about uh, um, the functional part of the study. Yeah. So I'm going to talk okay. there. Yeah. Okay. So um I'm gonna share my hospital. So um can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, I'm starting um so 
the LS and child protein contains three um, three part um, LSM domain, the putative AD domain, and the link region. We generated LSM to have knockout cells um, by knocking out from uh, 1747 uh, to 195 uh, MSC uh, residues by CRISPR case 9 methods. And then we confirmed by Western blood and immunofluorescence that the LSM12 protein has gone. Um, later on, we, use, uh, we transfected with LSM12 plasmid in knockout, in knockout cells, and we found that the staining is, is back. Okay. So next, we would like to study LSM12 function um, in NADP signaling. We use the cancer image experiment, which use the GCAM as a cancer indicator. We transfected TPC2, um, and then after inject NADP, we found in the white type cells, the cancer signaling has um, immediately increased. However, in knockout cells, after inject NADP, the signaling is, um, is gone. After we co-transfected with LSM12 plasmid, after inject NDP, the, the cancer signaling in knockout cells is uh, restored. And similarly, if we co-injected NADP and LSM12 protein, the signaling, the cancer signaling in knockout cells has also uh, restored. We also did some um, con uh, control experiments and we added the trans at 19 to make sure that our data is uh, similarly like uh, what published before. And also we test the TPC1 and get similar results, which shows that LSM12 is required for NADP signaling. Also, we tested LSM12 LSM12 function in other in other cell lines such as SKBR3 cells. We knocked down SLM12 protein in SKBR3 cells, and we're using the cancer image experiment to show that after knockdown of this protein, the cancer re the cancer release and the cancer signaling is significantly decreased. So later on, we would like to we would like to study LSM12 function in the hex cells. We use the um, a level method, which uh, using the NADP injection induced the whole cell recording current. So um, so far, we use the TPC2 and TPC1 plasma membrane mutant in in the white type cells. If we transfect it with TPC2, we can see a relatively larger in inward current. However, in this non-transfected TPC2 um, cells, we cannot get, uh, we just get very uh, relatively smaller current after inject NADP. In this LSM12 uh, knockout cells, after we transfect it with TPC2, we can, uh, we can see relatively smaller currents after inject NADP. However, if we um, co-transfected with TPC2 and LSM12 plasmid, we can see the current is restored. And a similar result has, has showed by co-inject with NADP and LSM12 purified protein, the current is restored. However, if we just inject LSM12 protein but no NADP, the, the current is, relative, is relatively small. And also we did some, um, some negative controls. One is the white type LSM12, oh, one is white type TBC2, um, which is mainly expressed in the lysosomes. We can see here the, the, the current is, uh, is relatively smaller. And also we, we use another uh, mutant, L265P, this mutant, is the uh, poor, um, is a poor, poor block mutant. 
and we can see the current is relatively smaller. So um, we use the two, two different concentration of NADP for injection and get the similar results. And also we test TPC1 and get the, and the result are similar, which shows that the LSM12 is required in the NADP signaling. And also, we would like to know the LSM trans function in the primary cells. So we would like to, at first, we would like to uh, generate a LSM trans knockout cell, a mice, but uh, failed. It might be caused by the lethal of the pups. So later on, we, we generated this um, delete uh, mice, which delete six residues in the LSM domain. So uh, after we generated this LSM12 um, 45 to 15 delete mice, we cultured the MEFs, which is mouse embryonic fibroblasters. And we, using the cancer image experiment, later on we found that after delete this uh, 45 to 15, these residues, the function of LSM12 is significantly decreased by the cancer, uh, by the but the cancer signaling has a significant decrease in this cancer image uh, experiment. So uh, at the same time, we, we um, translated, transfected this um, mutant in the, in the hack LSM12 knockout series. And we found that um, this, this LSM12 Delta 45 to 50 mutant has less effective than white types, than white type uh, LSM12 protein in restoring NADP evoked cancer release by using cancer, uh, cancer image experiment and a TPC2 activation um, by using this inject induced wholesale recording experiment. So um, finally, we would like to know which domain of this LSM12 has the most important part for its function. So we generated this. Um, we delete LSM domain and AD domain and the linker part. Using cancer image experiment, we found that the LSM domain is the most important part for LSM to have protein functions. Okay, um, so my part has done here. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, show a couple slides on the biochemical part and also some summary. And uh, she just mentioned the LSM domain, very important. And uh, it's a deletion caused a loss of uh, NDB induced uh, cancer release. So we did a biochemical study to study mechanism. And we found that the, after deletion of this LSM uh, domain, the LSM12 protein cannot bind to the NDP and also cannot bind to TBC2 as well. And uh, these two figures show that in this one, the uh, SM12 cannot put down the TPC uh, to anymore if the delete of the SM domain. And, but the other domain deletion have no such effect. And uh, when we use the uh, immobilized NDT to put down the SM protein, same thing, deletion of this SM domain, then cannot put down the SM protein anymore. Other region does not have such effect. And the same thing when we did a P30 label NDP, and the binding to the SM12 after deletion SM domain uh, cannot bind well anymore. So, so we are wondering if the SM12 and uh, can bind to intact with NDP and the TVC uh, through the SM domain, whether this uh, NDP and the TVC can uh, affect each other, affect each other on their binding to the SM12. So we found that actually they mostly work independently. And uh, we found that immobilized NDP can put down the TBC1, um, uh, put down the uh, SM12, uh, similarly in the present and absent of the TBC1 expression, and also similarly in the present and absent of TBC2 expression. And uh, this also TBC2 can put down the SM12 similarly in the absent or present of the NDP. So they work mostly independently, yeah. She mentioned this mutant, a six radio mutant, and uh, it's comprised in the function 
the customer release and also in the NDP induced the TBC2 activation. So we also did a binding assay between the uh, this mutant to the TBC2 and also to the NDP. So to the TBC2, we found that the TBC2 cannot put down the, uh, uh, I mean, the put down or uh, the amount of put down of the SM12 protein is barely detectable, uh, which is this mutant as compared to the Y type. On the other hand, and uh, NDP uh, still can uh, compete well with the Imula NDP uh, in the binding assay uh, between NDP and the SM12, which is the mutant. So look like the NDP binding is not effective much. So here, how does the SM12 work? And uh, I'll just talk a little beyond what we have the data. And uh, so SM12 belong the SM protein family and there's uh, more than 10 family members in the human. And most of them are uh, short form. They only contain the SM domain. And SM12 is kind of long form, contain also additional domain. So we can borrow some idea from the other SM protein, the short form. They form the oligomer and they can bind it to RNA. It's RNA regulation protein. And uh, they bind uh, in the ring, in the center of the ring, they form algorithm from the ring structure, very conserved structure. And NDP, we can also think about, is also dinucleotide, although in detail it's different from I structure, nuclear structure. So we saw the NDP and SM12, uh, NDP and the TBC2 can uh, look like it can bind uh, to the SM12 independently. So it, it's, it could be that the NTP binding the ring and then the, this loop region is where we delete six residue and uh, could be involved in the hydrogen with the TBC2. This too much speculation right now, yeah. So um, I'll go to the summary. So we, in summary, we consider SM12 and the NDP receptor protein and also TBC regulatory protein. It's high affinity to NDP. It intact with uh, both AND, uh, TBC2 and uh, TBC1 uh, and uh, required for NDP binding to the TBC channels and also to the membrane. Required for NDP invoked calcium release in three different cells and required for NDP induced the TBC2 and the TBC1 activity. And particularly when we micro inject the protein, purified protein can immediately restore the NDP induced calcium release and the TBC2 activity in the knockout cell. And SM12 protein, uh, the domain actually required for binding and to NDP and the TBC2. And uh, the six red deletion in the uh, SM domain and resulting in weak interaction with the TBC2 and reduce NDP induced the calcium release and the TBC2. This indicates that this complex formation between the SM12 and the TBC2 uh, should be important for the NDP signaling. So I particularly thank the uh, Jiyuan Zhang, previous lab member Jiyuan Zhang, and I think he's in the audience yeah, today. I told him this so he started a meeting and uh, he joined the meeting. Yeah. And uh, he did most of the biochemical work I presented today. And I uh, also thank my current lab member and uh, previous lab member for uh, discussion on this project on direct and indirect involvement. Yeah. Thank the Michael Zhu in our neighbor lab in Houston. Thank UT Southwestern in Xinjiang lab for close like uh, discussion. Thank my founding thoughts here. Yeah. Thank you all very much for your attention here. Yeah. yeah, thank you for the talk and apologize for the interrupting. No, <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> I thought we'd run out of time, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have, uh, yeah, people have already put questions in the chat box. Um, Christian, um, Professor Christian Screen, do you want to ask your questions? Uh, yes, yeah, thank you very much for the nice talk. Um, just very briefly on your EFRS data, I, I, it was a bit fast, but I, it looked to me that the currents were looking very much inwardly rectifying, reversal potential about zero millivolt. I mean, I would expect, I don't know the details of the composition of your solutions, but I would expect more linear currents with a reversal potential in the area of plus 50, plus 60. Can you comment on that? Yeah, we use the sodium in the pipette solution, potassium, uh, no, no, uh, potassium in the, in the pipette solution, sodium in the outside. So what we saw should be just the uh, sodium current, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the reverse potential um, at the zero, and um, we don't really know what it really caused that, and whether it's the property of the NDP induced the current or 
uh, just our method is not perfect. Yeah. So. Okay. Um. Yeah, so unfortunately, we can only ask one more question. And if we have more questions, we can ask that um, in the general discussion part. The next question is from um, Gert um, Botnik. So do you want to ask that question by yourself? <laughs> yeah, fascinating work. Uh, so any ideas on the stoichiometry of the interaction between the LSN12 and the TPC2 uh, complex? Uh, yeah, we don't know actually, and uh, we try to. Uh, it's a very hard study actually. We found SM12 is a hard protein, harder study than we thought. And uh, when we purified SM12, it's uh, from a different form, oligomer, dimer, and um, and also very dynamic. So it's really hard to control. And uh, we're working on that, but I don't have an answer yet. So, and also require, if you do that, we really need to do uh, purify the TBC on the well and uh, do the binding assay. So far, we have not gone that far yet. Yeah. Thank you. Fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the talk. And uh, now I think we will have um, five to 10 minutes.